In the name of God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We have commented from time to time in the last few weeks that the readings that we're hearing these days seem to be particularly appropriate for the, the time in which we're living. That is, in the midst of all the transitions that you and I are facing, that the world is facing, not just the seasonal ones, although that too, but all the transitions that the COVID virus have forced upon us, all the transitions that the political atmosphere has stirred. Amidst all of those transitions, we've been able to look at our scripture and, and see that transition is, is nothing new, that faithful people for generations, and maybe in every generation, have had to look to the scripture and had to have the faith and fortitude to live into the new day. Nothing could be more clear in that than today's Old Testament reading, where we've heard about the passing through the Red Sea. What a what an extraordinary moment of transition that was for the people of Israel. Transition out of slavery in Egypt into some wide open possibility of life as a people. And and how they lived into that, even though they had 40 more years in the desert to, to look forward to, though they didn't know that. So for Jesus, too, is, is speaking in these days is about the transition that his disciples will be going through once he has died and risen again. And it started a few weeks ago when he says uh, to Peter, you are the rock on which I will found my uh, faithful people. And launching from that, he, he begins to spell out what it is that are the characteristics of this community of his people, which will enable them to be God's kingdom in the world. That is, he gives them images to shape their community and to shape their own lives. And he says, to the extent that you can live into those images, into those understandings, to that extent, not only will you be an instrument of God's grace in the world, not only will you be calling the human race to to a set of values, but you will in fact be incarnating that kingdom. You will be that kingdom in that moment. So he pointed to the young child, put the young child in, in front of them and said, you must be innocent like this child. You must become like this child. You must be innocent. You must be hopeful. You must be joyful. You must be spontaneous. Those are the characteristics of the community that will manifest God in the world and will carry on my presence in the world. He talks about the shepherd who goes to find the sheep and says, that is an image of the kind of community I want you to be. The kind of community that seeks out the lost, the marginalized, the ones who are on the edge, the ones who are lost from the mainstream. To the extent that you can do that, you will not only be modeling some virtues, you will be the kingdom of God on earth. And of course, last week he talked about the problem when people sin against one another. What are we to do? Are we supposed to forgive one another? says Peter this week. Well, last week he says, well, it, you work it out. You go sit down, you have merciful conversations. If it doesn't work out, then you bring some more people into the conversation and you work on 
on reconciliation between you and the other, reconciliation within the community. And when you are a community of reconciliation, then you are the kingdom of God. And then today, Peter says his question, well then, how many times do I have to f forgive somebody? They sin against me is seven times enough? And Jesus says, no, 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 not seven times. Not seven times 70, but seven million times you have to forgive. Because the point is not keeping score. The point is keeping forgiveness always before you. That there is no end, there is no limit to how much forgiveness you are to, to manifest in your life. And if you can, as a community, manifest forgiveness, then you will be the kingdom of God. If you can do that as an individual, then you will be the deepest and truest kind of disciple. And then he goes on to tell that funny parable that we heard about the, the owner who forgives the chief servant a huge debt, that, the kind of money that, that they servant couldn't possibly have ever earned. It's a, uh, this is, story is supposed to be understood as a hyperbole, as, as an exaggeration uh, to make a point. And that servant gets forgiven and turns around and does not forgive the next servant. And Jesus says, well, what's that about? The heart of the matter is forgiveness. And that servant that chief servant has forgotten that he has been forgiven and has refused to carry on that model of living. So over all these weeks, Jesus is giving us these, these intimations about how we might manifest God's kingdom, not just manifest it, but be the kingdom if we are like a child, and innocent, and hopeful, if we seek out the lost, if we work for reconciliation, and if we are a forgiving people. I know, and you know, that forgiveness is not easy. Oh, sometimes it's easy, but very often there are things that are really hard to there are great injustices that, that you just in your heart can't say, I forgive that person. And, and that's true even in the politics of our own day. The, uh, those in authority in recent years have, have been so cruel, have been th so thoughtless and deliberately mean to people who are poor, who are on the edges, who are not white. It's, it's hard for us to dig up forgiveness for all of those offenses. But you know, that's okay. Because we cannot in ourselves compromise justice just in the name of forgiveness. Justice and forgiveness belong hand in hand. And unless the issues of justice are addressed, forgiveness will not be addressed. But ultimately, of course, forgiveness will be addressed. You can go and carry a grudge or carry a, an unforgiveness with you year after year after year, and you chew on it a little bit, still say, well, I can't really get to the forgiveness yet. We, that's just okay. Jesus didn't say that forgiveness was easy. Jesus didn't say that you could get it done in no time. Jesus said you got to work on it. That's the portrait that he's giving us in all of these images. You got to work on it. And, and then you'll move towards it. You gotta work on being a child who's innocent and hopeful. You gotta work on being someone who reaches out to 
edges. You gotta work, uh, working for reconciliation, practicing mercy. You gotta work on forgiveness. And and once in a while you get it. And whenever you get it, you are the kingdom of God on earth. You are the disciple that Jesus called you to be. These things are given to us as a as a framework to frame our aspirations as a people and as individuals. So keep working. Just keep at it. That's what Jesus wants us to do. Jesus wants us to be a people who understand what's important and who give ourselves to seeking to be a community and individuals who know how to forgive and who really try to do it. Amen.